Hello, my name is Dr. Simon Kelly. I'm a paediatric orthopaedic surgeon and a member of the Medical Advisory Board at the International Hip Dysplasia Institute. This is an instructional video to teach the proper application of a Pavlik harness. The Pavlik harness is commonly used for the treatment of developmental dysplasia of the hip for children under six months of age due to its effectiveness, its ease of use and its low rate of complications. However, if the harness is applied incorrectly, this can lead to serious complications or failure of treatment. This instructional video will guide you on how to correctly apply a Pavlik harness. The 25 steps outlined in this video were identified and validated for the teaching of Pavlik harness application by members of the Medical Advisory Board of the International Hip Dysplasia Institute. Please note that the use of the harness should be guided by a healthcare professional. For more information, please see the end of the video for further reference. Application Setup The baby should be undressed, a diaper or nappy and a single thin layer body garment can remain. The correct size harness should be chosen. While not essential, the baby's chest circumference can be measured at the nipple line using a tape measure as a guide. If the baby is on the border of two sizes of harness, the larger size should be chosen. Halter, chest and shoulder straps. The straps on the harness halter should be opened. The opened harness halter should be placed on the bed, front side facing up. The baby should be placed supine on top of the halter. The chest strap should be brought around the chest and secured at the nipple line. The chest strap should be checked by being able to comfortably insert two fingers inside the strap. The shoulder straps should be checked to cross posteriorly, then brought over the shoulders and threaded through the buckles on the chest strap. The shoulder straps should be secured to keep the chest strap at the level of the nipple line around the entire chest wall. Stirrups, anterior and posterior straps. The foot stirrup straps should be opened. The foot stirrups should be applied to the correct foot. The foot stirrup straps should be secured around the lower leg. Each foot needs to be held in the foot piece arch support using the provided sock or a soft shoe. The anterior hip flexion straps should be pulled through the correct buckle on each side. The line of pull of the anterior straps should follow the anterior axillary line on each side. The right and left anterior straps should be adjusted and secured with the hips in 90 to 110 degrees of flexion. The posterior adduction limiting straps should be pulled through the correct buckle on each side. The posterior straps should be adjusted and secured to allow for abduction by gravity and not forced abduction. The posterior straps should be adjusted to restrict hip adduction beyond neutral. The final position of each hip is rechecked once all straps are secured. For future reapplication, the anterior hip flexion straps are marked or taped where they have been secured for reapplication. The shoulder straps are marked where they have been secured for reapplication. The chest strap is marked where it has been secured for reapplication. The posterior straps are marked or taped where they have been secured for reapplication. <laughs> 